What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Screencast special WWE WrestleMania Ranked. I'm Greg, that's Tim, that's Mike, that's Sancho West, and we've invited a member of the wrestling world to pick a WrestleMania match each and every week for us to rank and review leading in to Philadelphia in April. If you love what we do, please support us with a Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free. Watch us record them live and get my daily video vlog, Greg Way, each and every day. You can get the Kind of Funny screencast for free with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, uh, Kishen Patel, Nathan Lamoth, Karen Lind 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 Lindener, uh, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, and Casey Kern. Before we go any further, Sancho West, how are you? I am ecstatic. It's always awesome to be on Kind of Funny with the Kind of Funny best friends. And more importantly, we're talking wrestling, you know, that with the I in and the apostrophe at the end. And, uh, you know, What's interesting for me, this could have come at a better time. I mean, we'll talk about the happenstances. Me, a content creator, getting involved in the wrestling community, finally putting my name into the hat and getting involved into the, the fray. And what better way to launch point that for than a kind of funny WrestleMania in review? And, you know, I love the in review series. Oh, do we got podcasts in a podcast here? I, no, I, we don't. We got Tim put a quick end to that. <laughs> well, I guess we do. We got Tim. one man gang gang. With yeah, I was like, yeah. podcast in a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Tim, we are, I'm going gonzo. We want to rank those out. Talk about it. he's just so built. You know what I mean? Like he's not like Jack built, but that man's just like sturdy. Taker? Yeah, Taker. He's I a love tree trunk. It, dude. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Man, it's amazing to look Uncle at. Meat. Like compared to everyone else, like that dude. That man's just built. Sancho, you call out, yes. of course, you've been on Kind of Funny a bunch, usually for game stuff, Fortnite, pop in and talk about that. You are going full Lost bore into wrestling content creation. Tell us about that and where can people keep up with you? Uh, definitely. Thank you. Uh, you could keep up with me on TikTok is because it's the Wild West over there, and you could show a lot of wrestling content itself at Sancho West Wrestling on TikTok. And I am spattering there on Instagram as well, at Sancho West, but essentially is I wanted to pivot my content creating away from Fortnite mainly and get into pro wrestling because it's something that I've loved for the longest time since I was a kid. But more importantly, I really believe with the Netflix deal and things of that sort that wrestling is going to hit another stratosphere. And the WWE seems to be embracing content creators a little bit more easier. Lots of content creators have been in promo packages and things of that sort. Yeah. And that would be awesome if I was on a Mania promo package. But it, for me, Greg, it's more of like a way to get more intimate with wrestling. And I found it being a, you know, a clip reaction or watching watch parties with uh, SmackDown and Raw that I have begun a little bit more intimate. And one thing as well is you've had Santi's app as well. And we've created a podcast called Wrestling is Cool. And it's a little bit more of a lax approach to wrestling, more of a fan created uh angle at it so to speak and it's been fun and hell dude we went to wrestlemania 39 together and that was an experience in itself seeing you know you do your thing and then seeing tim rocking the the awesome outfit and snowbike mike sneaking his way down to the front in a variety of places and it was a great time and and forever i will also love i, I would love wrestling man it, it's just my thing man and hell yeah it's just a part of who i am Love it. Uh, this episode is brought to you by WWE 2K24 and Avatar Braving the Elements. But we'll start with a video to explain how we got here. What's up? It is former AEW oh, superstar and kind of funny best friend, a.k.a. one of the trogs. Let's go. Fuego okay. del Sol. And if the kind of funny crew is reviewing WrestleMania matches, then you cannot... You cannot leave off one of my favorite matches of all time. I'm talking WrestleMania 25, The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. Both men known for creating big moments at WrestleMania and Shawn Michaels, who was a mainstay of Raw for so long, The Undertaker, a mainstay of SmackDown for so long, a match that we hadn't got since the 90s, the year before the Royal Rumble. They're the final two men and we finally got that glimpse of what could be a great match here today. And then you have this great build where Sean is trying to prove he's not intimidated. He will not be scared of The Undertaker. And it leads to one of the greatest matches of all time, with one of the coolest finishes of all time. I cannot wait for you guys to watch this match. Let's go back to WrestleMania 25 live from Houston, Texas on April 5th, 2009 in front of 72,744 fans. 
Mike, you weren't watching wrestling. You weren't Not aware all. of this. Nope. I mean, what did you think watching this? Oh, I mean, can I use the word? You ready? Sure. Perfection. Yeah. yeah. This was it. This is, you have taken me to the absolute peak, boys. I want to thank, of course, AEW Superstar and just wrestling phenom Fuego Del Sol has been everywhere for this match recommendation because we've seen some great ones. We've seen some stinkers, JBL. I'm talking to you, big dog. But I'll tell you what, this was the peak. I was taken to it. I am a believer. And by God, it's still real to me, damn it. Because <laughs> that sign was in the background. Oh, so yeah. Good. I loved it. I loved everything. It was probably, it was actually, you know, closer to the time frame of that actually happening. <laughs> Sancho, you talk about wrestling being, you know, part of you, fabric of your soul, right? Mike's the opposite of that. He's our noob that we've brought along for this show as he's fallen in love with it more recently. What do you remember about this match? Were you there for the build? Were you watching live? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I was there. It, it was more of one of those things where I wasn't there week to week basis, Yeah, but it was there because it's mania and you always have to find a way to watch mania, especially one that was in Texas and growing up in Laredo, Texas, and finally moving to Austin, Texas. For me, when it comes down to these two, these are the master classes, the masterpiece. You want to go to who is the best of all time. This is Mount Rushmore living in person, fighting it out in the ring. And more importantly, Shawn Michaels, is a Texas boy, and uh -huh. I absolutely gravitated to Shawn Michaels. Anytime I heard San Antonio, which is as close as you're going to get to Austin at that time, I was like, yes, dude, this is my guy, especially guy. when he... He's my guy, yeah, especially when he overcame, uh, you know, with the D, uh, D where that one battle was Stone Cold. I mean, that was fantastic. And then you had the whole DX angle with Mike Tyson. There's so many things that Sean has been a part of. And to go against the streak, the Undertaker, I, I, I was ecstatic to be able to watch this again. I'm just surprised, gentlemen. I, and I have to say this. Why not WrestleMania 26? We had the career versus the streak. I was fake. Hey, hey, but Fuego says he wanted to watch 25. I'm all for it. Yeah, I think, you know, what's spectacular about this, and you really will get into the package and all that stuff and yada, yada, yada. But, like, it was the fact that this is a dream match that you never thought you would have seen, right? Like, I always go back to when we talk on the show about coming back to wrestling when I came to high school and it was so cool for the Attitude Era. Like, I remember my first Raw back because my first Raw back after having kids at school turned me back on to, oh, you got to watch blah, 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 was when Triple H came out and uh, Sean had just left WWE. And it's when he brings out X-Pac, and by the end of the show, he gets uh, Road Dog and Billy Gunn to join DX. It was the formation of the new DX, but it was this thing of like, when Sean left, you thought it was over, over, right? And they, they make reference to it in the match, of course, and their package, too, of like him actually getting hurt against The Undertaker in the casket match with a back injury that would lead to him being on ice for four years and being gone. So for him to come back and come in and put on this clinic with Taker of like what it was. And granted, I mean, it wasn't his first match back, but you understand what I'm saying of like, this is insane. And the pomp and the circumstance and what mania is, is outrageous to him. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, we, the last couple matches, like Mike was saying, they kind of range, but then you look at some of them. I feel like I've such a broken record here being like, that's one of the best of all time, but to keep going, this is one of the best of all time. For sure. We can say it's lightning in a bottle. And we look at the, the Hogan, um, rock match. Like I do think that was lightning in the bottle. That was place. That was time. That was a, an energy and, uh, a culmination of stories without it being a story itself. It just, those moments came together to everyone understood what this meant for the men in that ring and to the people watching and the passing of the torch and the generations and all of that. Even though it wasn't really a passing of the torch in a literal way, it was in the sense uh, from a fan perspective and all that. This to me is the opposite of lightning in a bottle. This is what actual planning and good ideas seen all the way through can look like. Yeah. Where you're talking about two of the best of all time with, with storylines that matter. Like I always love... Uh, when a belt doesn't need to be part of the match and it still feels like it's the main event. Sure. Just because of who is wrestling and why they're wrestling. And for it to be WrestleMania 25, the streak, which at this point was uh, uh, how 16 many? And 16, 16 and 0. 0. That's, that's a lot, man. Yeah. 16 and 0. And then Shawn Michaels, Mr. WrestleMania. Yep. Like, I love that for years there was a run with Taker that it's like, it's not going to be this one, but it could be this one. It really, it could be this one. And watching this match multiple times, I know the answer. I know that Taker wins. But I was like, hey, this could be the one. Like, they make you believe. And that, I think, is the most important thing wrestling can possibly do is just entertain you so much that reality goes away. You were just in the moment. And these two men are so uniquely positioned because they are so charismatic. They are so 
like specific in the way that they move and the mannerisms. Mm -hmm. And we talked last match mm -hmm. about the Hogan Rock, not last match, but the Hogan Rock match of like, it's catchphrases and poses, right? Shawn Michaels and Undertaker have those. And then they also have the unique moves, the finishers, the specials. And because they've been doing this for so long, unlike most wrestlers who they might have their, their, their special, they have a finisher. Maybe there's like a, uh, a submission variant that they add in. Both Undertaker and Shawn Michaels have about 10 specials and any situation that they're in could result in a special and that could then result in a reversal of that special over and over in every unique possible way. These are old men, even at this point, going at it and you would not know. It cracks my shit up when JR calls well, Shawn Michaels a young old. man at one point in this thing. I'm like, I shut up, JR. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, he's yeah, right there with you. <laughs> anyway, I just, uh, this match is, uh, it, it, it's it's literally perfect. To like, jump off of something you said there, right, I think that I want to get in while before we get too far away. You're talking about how good they are and how good they are with reversals, counters, specials, but it's a moment to moment thing. It, one of my third bullet point on the match itself, right, it's like when Taker gets the advantage, he gets shown in the corner and starts throwing strikes. You see why these guys are so great. Undertaker's punches look powerful. They look terrifying. And the way Shawn Michaels is whipping his hair back and his head back, you, it looks like he's getting the shit kicked out of him. And it's like punches in the corner look entertaining and awesome. And oh my God, let alone what you will see as you go. Tim, I don't want to get too far away yeah. from you because I love starting with a hype package with you. I appreciate that. What do you think of this of hype package? He is the king of hype. I he mean, hype. I don't know that I am because whoever worked on this actually is. This, again, it's not <laughs> lightning in a bottle. This is a vision. This is an understanding of you can only do the look back at everything leading up to this moment stuff so many times. Yeah. And uh, whenever you do, it needs to tell its story besides just like, here's a list of events that happened. Why did this list of events turn into this moment right now and why is that special and being able to compare the legacy of the streak 16 wins of undertaker over even more than 16 years of wrestlemania there having Shawn michaels be mr wrestlemania being able to show so much footage and including the bouts that they've had together in the past yeah all of that coming together but wrapped in this beautiful bow of its light versus, versus dark dark Shawn Michaels coming out wearing the all white. That is not a Shawn Michaels thing. This no. was for this feud. And oh, they went there, man. They went there. Dude, yeah, the swelling music between, between, behind Sean's heaven on earth speech. Quote, sometimes it's hell trying to get to heaven. Then to move to 16 and 0. This fucking montage of the Undertaker WrestleMania wins, the commentators, that. But then Sean, but I am Mr. WrestleMania, right? The time for prayer has just begun. The choir music, the light. For, this is, I, I think it was said last week by Simon, but this is a 10 out of 5. Like, this yep. is a package I could not get over. Sancho, am I crazy? No, you're not. And it goes into another gear when it shows Shawn Michaels in a literal cemetery kicking <laughs> over the, the tombstones, right? <laughs> it, that's when it just keeps going. And you talked about that. It's like a prayer. I think it's like, and though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, like that in itself is really classic. But you nailed it, Tim. This is because this package is only powered by the legacy that it holds behind it. Without that legacy, you're not going to get this strong of a package. I mean, probably the greatest package of all time is going to be the rock versus stone cold in my way. Like that, that to me is the top, but that doesn't have as much legacy involved in terms of taker for versus sure. shot. And the reason why I, I give it the five out of five for myself is that it has that undertaker legacy. And if anything with Sean, it's just going to be a, a plus because Sean could could put anything over and this package was entirely had multiple layers and it sets it up perfectly you don't you don't have any questions about what's going on and I think you nailed it Tim light versus dark the, the, my only gripe about it we got we can't just give everything flowers here okay my only gripe about it is they ruined Sean seeing that the, I wish Sean waited WrestleMania to pull out that that all white gear. Sure, it was doing so it early. Clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would have been it would have so been way dope. Clean doper. and it was so clean. And I know we'll get to the entrances later, but I, I thought, wow, that reminded me of the Floyd Mayweather, where you use your opponent's gear and you wear it, you intimidate them. And I thought it was a perfect choice for Sean to do that. But this is a great precursor if you're wanting to get more into the Undertaker's WrestleMania lore. To the Undertaker Cemetery cinematic match, which is against AJ, AJ Styles. Ooh. Now that one, that's why Undertaker is such a cool gimmick, because you could do anything with the guy. Yeah. Put it on the list for me to watch. I haven't seen that, but I'll tell you what. Oh, as the newbie, oh, oh, like this is this is how you set the stage. 
This is how you put it up for me to understand what am I watching. Of course, I know who The Undertaker is. Did I know he was on a 16-0 win streak? Absolutely not. Do I know Mr. WrestleMania? No, I do not. But he's had 16 years of WrestleMania hype, and he's ready to break the streak. And I'm sitting there going, is he going to break the streak? You see the signs in the background when we get to the entrances, but the package itself, light versus dark, it was all there. The history, the setting it up, and the commentary was beautiful. The commentary, when we get into this, was so well done that added on the things that I needed, right? They talk about it. Sean got over on him the past two times with that sweet chin music. And now in the back of my head, I'm like, man, when he does that, could it be the one right there? And so I'm on the edge of my seat just getting to it going, is am I going to witness history here? Because it's on the line. And it felt like it was about to go down. And, and so that's all I could ever ask for. To be clear, we're all saying five out of five on that one, I assume. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just making sure. I just want to make Six sure. Six out of five. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. <laughs> so good. Sancho, so, kick hey, me off talking about the Elden Ring music. Sorry, was that? Oh, the Elden Ring music that was in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Incredibly yeah, yeah, yeah. epic music. And again, using that type of epic music is a, a cheat code. Like, it's like, it makes things more exciting. But also, it makes things evident when you don't really got the stuff. Like, yeah. if you're putting yeah, that yeah, type yeah, of music, yeah. like, Gia will always make fun of me when we had to make the uh, trailer for Kind of Funny Live 2. And we knew internally the kind of funny live two was going to have the video walls and be it's so much bigger than kind of funny live one which in comparison was an absolute joke of an event i loved it it was amazing of course, of course but, but it was, was we were, it was so. very 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 small there was like very little pomp and circumstance at the time there was a lot but um the trailer for kind of funny live two there's a part where i like like last year we did this and this and it was crazy and then the video footage i have which was the most exciting footage was just like balloons kind of dropping down in, in front of us standing on stage <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she's yeah, just yeah. like that is the least hype thing possible she's like i know it's all you got but it's so funny and now it's like we have the stuff to back up the music this mm -hmm. that song was that times a thousand ratcheted all the way up that wasn't just like the elden ring intro like uh menu music that was the elden ring final boss music that andy's been showing me where it's just like way 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 upped and the footage totally matched it totally so anyways, Sancho, talk to me about yes. entrances. You kick off this section for us. All right. Uh, you, you talk about, there's nothing like, Mike, there's nothing like an Undertaker entrance at Mania. It is the probably the most budgeted, the most pyro, anything you can think about it. But I have to tell you, though, Mike, this is probably the most basic one out of all the Taker entrances. There's not a lot of extras. There's not druids. There's none of these kind of special <laughs> I was expecting a motorcycle. Things. I was like, oh, hey, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought no, he was no. American out. badass. Now we want yeah, an American that, badass right here. <laughs> that's biker taker, my friend. So out of the taker interest, I love that the use of the fire was really cool because it's trying to really nail down heaven and hell here. And I think they did a great job with it. And by far, this is my favorite version of Undertaker, the dead man veteran versus sure. like the urn carrying yep. Undertaker. This one is by far the black leather is fantastic. And then when you juxtapose that with Shawn Michaels, who, I'm going to be real, I'm sure all y'all on paper been through these kinds of meetings were like, you know what, I'm going to come down from a little lift, and it's going to be really <laughs> awesome, <laughs> but it lost a lot of steam for me as he was making his way down, it looked cool. Uh, for a moment, but I was like, "All right, Sean, you got to get your way down." Oh, here you're a fucking quick. crazy! I'm just saying, dude. I'm Him just saying, descending I'm... from heaven, Taker ascending from hell. Great, but I mean, when it comes down, and you're like, "Damn!" Like I know Sean's the whole born again Christian thing, and you know what I mean. It's like yeah, there's a whole story yeah. behind it, right? And you're like, "Damn, this is coming!" And he gets to the ground. Okay, you did, explosion, you didn't get... and then bam, no, it's sexy boy. No, 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 yes, you didn't let me get to that point yet. That was the saving grace when it hits that dun dun dun, dun that guitar. Riff. Oh, finally. That's the shot I know. That is the one that I love. This stuff, come on, Tim. You gotta pack me up on that. That was no, a little bit of not at all. It was incredible. That, here's where I'm at with it. It's like I, I I agree with so much of what you're saying up until the disrespect to Shawn oh, Michaels shit. descending from the heavens. Because Shawn Michaels' theme song is it is so iconic. Yeah. And it is such a moment where he is one of those guys where he gets the pyro, he gets the pose, he gets like the the stuff going on, plus up from a lot of the other guys that like might just have whatever song he's singing his own song mike i mean like come on there's so much oh he's singing that yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's crazy. yeah there's so much and the female voice is jimmy hart it, it's uh, they just crank it he had to crank it up in post because he had no females to say it's, it's gold up. man uh but i love that like how do you plus it up especially with the storyline they got going here you add the choir you add the descent you add the colors the white smoke and all of that just 
again, for a specific, we're telling this story, and this is the best way to to possibly do it. It, it was perfect for me, man. And, and to your point about held. Taker, uh, I do love, and this is true of the entrance and the match itself, like it was, uh, I don't want to say no frills, but there wasn't the interruptions. There wasn't the need for the druids and all this stuff. It was like, no, we, we, the story here of like putting these two against each other, they need to just be mere images, just be mere other. images. Yeah. Don't, don't plus it up too much. It, it enhances it more. So yeah, I, it's fives from me. Yeah. hundred percent for me too. Sancho, does it bring it down or is it still a five for you? Hating ass hater. I'm just, it's a five, but it, I, I know in their mind, they thought it was cooler. Yeah, come on. It was know. cooler. Yeah, it, it, Mike, it, tell yeah. me he's wrong. I mean, I, I don't agree with Sancho, but I will say something that people are going to get on me for. As Hit the me, newbie, Mike. I am not accustomed to Sean's music. And everything we went through the hype package with to then get the five of it and then switch to Sexy Boy, I was like, that sucks. <laughs> like, oh, that's no, like, no, I was like no. it's odd to me because I get that this is your theme music. This is what you've built. Everybody knows it. But it is on like there's got to be a conversation in the back room of like, hey, I know that's your song, but like the vibe we're going with, this is a, a tonal shift that doesn't fit at that's all. That's not wrestling. And for me, it's like that happened. And I'm like, okay, well, now you've lost me. Like, I, it's funny. I get it. It's a gimmick, but I didn't love this. It's song. more at this My. point, like. For Sean and that music again, like I thought I would never hear it again at some point. Really? You know what I mean? okay. And not to mention, think of it this way too, for like what we're talking about of legacies and all the shit. Like, I, well, I love that JR calls out, right? The irony of numbers. This is HBK's 16th WrestleMania. It's 16 and 0 for Taker. But it's the idea that like, you have to understand my first wrestling show ever was a house show in Chicago. And it was, Sean came out and I, I stood up on my chair and I, I went to yell, but you're not, it was during the song, I went, but you're not a sexy boy. But I caught myself and my mom's like, you can say it. <laughs> Cause I knew sex wasn't a word you threw around, but you're not yeah. a sexy boy. Like that's how old, like Sean, like how long Sean's career is. <laughs> let alone you get there. And we already gone, you don't know it of course, but like he had done DX. So he did have different music for a while. You know what I mean? The DX theme. And then, but he, to come back, and be the heartbreak kid to come out. I mean, like, again, I think I love it and I love them being mirror images, right? Because Sean is energy coming. He always has been, right? And that's why I went to push. He's in the, the fucking white, everything white's gone and he's in his outfit, comes down. Even when he drops, does his prayer and pops a fucking pyro. And like, they do such a great job of scale with these entrances of yep. showing you how tall the WrestleMania stuff is back there and like having the fire. Uh, oh, what a set. That stage. What a stage. stage. Yeah. The diamond yeah. star. Come on. Dude. Houston Texan as big as you could imagine out there it, it was so hot cool. and, and i know like we, we talk a lot about the arena shows or stadium shows and like how the ramp can uh add or take away from uh the experience i loved this there's something about the, the this era right here where it was led but it wasn't full led the ramp is long but like it looked purposeful something about this one added up for me and maybe it was just these entrances but uh and especially with with undertaker you got it's so long you got to give him uh some time to walk and stuff and i feel like it was the right level and plussing up Sean's entrance to have so many extra bits to, yeah, to yeah. match that. I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought the cam work was really good too. You know, like they cut back to Sean a couple things, boom and oh. all out and they cut to Sean. He's there. And I love the line that uh, JR has, right? He's like one defiant, one destructive. Cause they keep driving home that Sean's not scared. He's not worried about, he's not, you know, it's not the phenom to him. It is this. And even the line, uh, they're both winners, but only one can win tonight. Like, oh, oh my God, that's a really great setup. Another one, because you know I'm a big Michael Cole guy. I Shout out to Michael video. Cole on the desk, man. Is that, you got the two legends and then Michael Cole in there. Like, that's the youngest I've seen Michael Cole. And I'm like, yo, look at him on the table, man. That's my dude. Like, what if I told you that, like, during this era, this is a little after me and Cool Greg's time, but, like, Michael Cole was not liked. Like, Michael Cole was, like, the new guy. It's like, get out of here. You're not the king. You're not JR. Like, you're just the other guy. Like, whatever. And it is so silly to think that now because, like, he is so damn good. Yeah. And he probably always was. And honestly, like, looking back and even hearing him here, I'm like, we were just such little assholes. Like, sure. You know, but, but like, I mean, that was always the thing of you're coming off of JR and the King, right? You're coming off of this setup that has just been so good for so long that introducing anybody is going to be a long, you know, swing of trying to get in there. And then not to mention that you know, he does, I don't think he's done favors by the on again, off again relationships of commentators for a while there yeah. where JR is there. He's gone. He's this, he's that King's there. He's gone. He's like, you, he, it would have been easier. I think to start a commentary team that was Cole and somebody else. And like that goes, and you're like, okay, cool. Like he had Taz on whatever yeah, SmackDown, Smackdown stuff, yeah. but it, even then it wasn't like, 
you're not the guys. And and that's it's funny Sancho brought this up, um, and uh, it's not as relevant to the the intro itself or whatever. But uh, an important thing that I want to nail home to you, Mike, is the Raw and SmackDown. Like getting them together was not a common thing. Like there'd be Survivor Series every year. That was kind of the bigger chance, and like there were the bigger pay per views that there would be some the crossover. But back then, it was very much the SmackDown versus Raw era where. For the most part, they were separate things, and you're not seeing people pop up every week on different shows. And they would actually do a draft where it was like once a year there'd be a draft of who's going on what show, and they took it a little more seriously. They just did that one recently. While they do, yeah, it. but yeah. but they took it more seriously then. Like it, sure. it felt like it actually meant more. Than, yeah, you wouldn't actually see each other. Yeah, then. so building up these two amazing legends on each uh, side, Undertaker owned SmackDown. Like SmackDown was Undertaker's, especially during that generation. So for him to go up against Mr. WrestleMania, Rep and Raw. Uh, something special. Ooh. Mike, jump in and talk to me about the match. Oh, man. The match was a ton of fun. Um, This match was meaty. This match went the distance, and it took me places, and I loved every single moment of it. I think uh, me and Tim were having a meeting in the conference room when you started this, and we see you <laughs> just reacting to it as you watch at your desk. It was unreal. And, I mean, I'll... You know, there's so much to cover. There were so many incredible spots here. There were so many moments where the crowd really got into it. I mean, if you put me Amazing in crowd. this moment job, here Houston. in Houston, I would be standing the entire time because it was absolutely phenomenal. There was great moments of commentary mixed with the match where Shawn Michaels is putting Taker in the submission lock, and they're like, he's never tapped out. He'll never tap out. And you're like, is, is he going to tap out tonight? <laughs> and you got the signs all over the place. The beginning of the cat and mouse game, and I'm faster, I'm smaller, yep. I'm more agile than you, and I'm ducking under you, and I'm playing games with you, to Taker, like you said, just getting a hold of him. And there is something that I will never forget. As much as I've watched wrestling to as little as I've watched wrestling, when Taker gets a hold of you by the throat for the choke slam, and there's moments where he gets you and you feel it, but there's moments where somehow there's a clap on it. Yeah. You don't forget that. That's yeah. the sound that I want to hear every time he gets a hold of somebody. And I mean, I don't want to, I'll let you guys go, but I'll tell you, this match was phenomenal. I had a ton of fun. It went the distance with everybody's finishers. The finale was incredible. We'll talk about this was awesome to watch. Sancho, what about you? Wrestling lifelong fan. <laughs> I, I Look, I'm not trying to be Mr. Wet Blanket here. Okay? Oh, my God. I'm, 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 let me slow down. Slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa slow Get down your here, okay? pitchforks ready. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a heel here, okay? I think the match really starts cooking halfway through. It, it gets really good for me. Now, I enjoy the offensive dif disparity between the two where Sean is not going to pick up Taker. He does do some atomic drops and things of that sort. Yeah, yeah. And he uses his quickness, as Mike pointed out. But for me, the match is its very formulaic, a very television safe match until you get after that, good Lord, that botch spot with Oof. the taker going out of the ring. Oof. After Amazing. that moment, it was crazy that he did that. After that moment, that's when the match really gets into its really cooking. All right. It does a lot better than cock and ever can. All right. We're talking about masterclass wrestling between the two where you have those finishers versus finisher a counter encounter and you're talking about the selling of and it wasn't was that because sean has a tendency to oversell if he wants to yeah if you get on his bad side like he did against hogan in SummerSlam, he will oversell but this was just the right amount to make taker it just shows you the amount of respect that sean has for the undertaker and once we get into that third act of getting closer to the finish that's when not you talked about the crowd the crowd really was in a tense mood until that about the halfway point. Then they really got into it. And then they really started believing that Sean could do this. And that's when I think that's when the match, it, it, it gets that tipping point for me. Cause at first they were like, we're on Taker's side. We're not gonna go for Sean. Sean, whatever you do, we don't care. And then it's until they start believing like Rocky Tim, <laughs> that he's going to be able to get this job done. That's for me when the match gets really good for me. And the finish we'll talk about later, but yeah, it's a great match. It, it just took a little bit to get there. That's all. Really See, I appreciate that, though. Really quick. Nothing cooler than the last ride signature move when he fully extends his arms. No human being should be going through that. <laughs> you should not be. Safety protocol should say do not do that. And when he fully extends and throws you down, it's like that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And, 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 and to put a pin on what I was going to say is this is like probably one of the most Ver athletic versions of Taker that we get yeah. to see in a, in a while. Like this is where Taker is he's laying it all out. He's laying it all out, and he in 
And Mike, just to let you know, for The Undertaker, at this moment of time, he wouldn't, he was starting not to wrestle less and less. He would probably appear a couple of nights here and there, and then he started wrestling less and less after this, and he only appeared at WrestleMania, and he would train all year for just a WrestleMania moment. So this was like the last version of Undertaker that was wrestling full-time, oh. that had a lot of moments in throughout the year, and would accumulate it in a WrestleMania defense of the streak. So that to me, what I enjoyed the most, because this was like, all right, this is the Undertaker that we're going to remember forever, not the Undertaker past this point when he gets, I would say, beyond WrestleMania, like 2029 ish, where that's after Undertaker versus Triple H and Shawn Michaels as the special, mm, special guest. You need to watch that, Mike. Yeah, right. After that moment, that's when we get a different Taker. This episode of WrestleMania Ranked is brought to you by WWE 2K24. Step into the ring and finish your story with new match types like ambulance and casket matches, a roster of more than 200 superstars and legends, new career mode experiences, and so much more. The latest installment of the franchise features several advancements, including 2K Showcase of the Immortals. 40 years in the making, WWE 2K24's Showcase Mode puts players in control, playing through the most iconic moments in WrestleMania history. As 2K's distinctive slingshot tech seamlessly morphs from gameplay to live action footage and back again for the most immersive WrestleMania video game experience to date. Finish your story with standard edition cover superstar, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, or deluxe edition cover superstars Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. When WWE 2K24 launches on March 5th with early access and March 8th worldwide. Pre-order WWE 2K24 and receive one month of Peacock, US only, and WWE 2K23 digital only to play while you wait. This episode's brought to you by Avatar Braving the Elements. We know you love talking about all things TV, film, and pop culture with us, so there's another podcast that we think you're gonna enjoy. It's called Avatar Braving the Elements, and it's Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming of age heroes journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko for a deep dive and behind the scenes look into the Avatar verse you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a longtime vendor or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Y'all need to check out Kind of Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kind of Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kind of Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video-only show, so many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube. But despite that, that enough of you guys asked for audio versions so we're making that happen anyways of course that also means if you have the kind of funny membership on patreon you will now also get the audio version of the show ad free no matter how you're watching or listening to kind of funny game showdown thank you and if you haven't checked it out yet there is no better time than now we're already many episodes into the show so you can catch up now on youtube or the brand new podcast version of the show if you love what we do please get the kind of funny membership on patreon or on youtube to get the show ad free if you just want to support us for free please subscribe and rate kind of funny game showdown on your favorite podcast service now i understand where you're coming from with this one Sancho but I think it's all part of the storytelling of like I like the cat and mouse in the beginning Sean faking injuries you sure know, to suck it and all that stuff I agree it's not, I mean I don't think I don't want to say it takes a while to get cooking because I think that's an a, a, a integral part of the match especially to get where we are at the end right of that just amazing thing when Sean kicks out and Undertaker fly, like does the I can't believe this is happening the, to get mm -hmm. to the end where they finally have we have a finish and both competitors just lay there on the floor exhausted like be like it was such if we didn't have a oh we're going and going and going and building and building and building I don't think that hits as hard Tim if that makes sense oh I mean I'm I'm, I'm so right there with you I feel like you needed the first you needed every element of this match to for it to earn what it gets to at the end because 
Uh, we always talk about the one, two oos, the, the two counts, yeah. you know, and like she how much it, it bothers it. Gia. She hates how overused it is. And it, it is overused in a lot of ways. I also get it's just part of what the language of this is. But when you earn this many kickouts and it gets to the point, because like it's kind of like a family guy joke where they make the joke the first time and you laugh and they make it again. You're like, why you keep doing this joke? But then they do it again. And you're like, you know what? It's funny again. Uh, in wrestling, I feel like it's the type of thing where when we get the the two count, you're like, Okay, and then they do it again. You're like, all right, how long are we going to do this? The third time, fourth time, fifth time. As you like, keep going and they keep up in the ante, you're like, how are these men still going? And that's what I'm most impressed by is like what Sancho was saying. This is Undertaker just going. And I felt, feel like I haven't seen that in yeah. so long. I just haven't watched any of the old matches. And it was so nice to see because I'm like, yes, this is Taker. This is what we remember. And it's not even him going because I feel like it's going and going and going. Yeah. There are so many things that are mm -hmm. the counter reversal. I mean, an early one, right? It's Sean, double axe handle off the top rope, into the choke slam, into into the cheat, sweet chin music. It's a counter, into the figure four, into the hell's gate, into the rope. You're like, yeah, that's like shit you read out loud and even watch. And I'm like, damn, I'm used to seeing this shit in like ECW, like RVD, totally. Jerry Lynn, maybe a little more high flying. But it is that idea of like counter, counter, counter. Yep. We're so evenly matched. And especially here from the beginnings of, I'm going to be fast. I'm going to dodge your punches. I'm going to kick you. I'm going to chop you. I'm going to get out of there. Like to get to this point. Like damn. It, the, the beginning was like, who's the in charge of the momentum, right? And then as you went on, then it just became a battle of finishers and reversals and all yeah. that. And I feel like all of that just told such a, a great story. But it reminded me a lot of last year at WrestleMania 39 watching uh, Rhea and Charlotte, where it's like, mm. you could tell mm. they're like, we're going all out. Like we're trying to make a moment here that is going to be unforgettable. And we're leaving it all on the, the, in the ring. That's what this match was. Both of these men, this could have been their last match. It, it, this felt like totally, a retirement match. Totally. You know, like they, they, they just put it all out there. No shame. It's like, man, it's it's really incredible. And even uh, Taker do, getting the botch there, of like, it was scary, you know, seeing it this was. giant Dude. nine and a half foot tall man dive out of this. But that adds that reality to all of this and how brutal this whole thing can be. I mean, I've seen this match multiple times. I've seen that clip multiple times, but watching it at my desk today, I literally, oh, like I did a gap, like, you know what I mean? Because it happens and it's just so wrong. It's just so bad of just freaking straight down, like penciling into a pool. The indentation of his head on the thing. The it was on the mat. He's it's actually crazy. concussed. He breaks his pinky. You know, he Oof. does tell the ref to do the shoot count. Like if I don't get in there by 10, that's the end of this. Like he tells the ref that in real life. Okay? Wow, that's this amazing. Is what it's going to be. It's that. an insane thing that totally builds the match to another level and takes it to another gear. Uh, and I mean, again, Sean doing such a great job with the ref and put propping him up in the corner and yelling at him and like and the crowd starts getting really you know t turning on Sean about it like damn this is so fucking good and there's so much of that and something we called out earlier to double down on here is what a great job the commentary team is doing right I love I put here like they put out the stakes right of like even though it's Taker it's 16 and 0 right Taker has never beaten HBK on a one on one right Taker cost HBK uh, four years of his career right uh, and then there's just some great lines in there as they go through and are just screaming about it. like when the first the first kip up from Shawn Michaels right where he kicks back up and after he's been hurt or whatever and JR's like Michaels didn't have to get up that way but that's the way he does it at Wrestlemania back to what you're saying of like both of these guys are just going like they are all out it's we'll leave it all in the field this could be our last match of all time so uh, I'm, I'm happy you said that because you know this setup for this match being light versus dark both of them having just countless finishers for every scenario that you're in multiple things to do off the ropes like very, very cool uh, how much room they had to play with and, and reverse and all that. Um, but the kickups, right? These are two characters that have unique kickup animations, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like HBK having the like the full uh, one and then Undertaker doing the, the sit-up, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, both of those are such iconic moments. And there was multiple times where both men are just flat in the ring. And it's the question of who's going who's to get up. Like, yeah, yeah, are yeah. they both going to go? Is it just going to be one, just the other? And I feel like... Thank you so much. Gang, gang. That was like such a good uh, way to to show who was winning at that moment in time in the match, and yeah. also like to show that like even if at one point they were they were too tired to get up later in the match, they both do. Oh my gosh! Can we give a shout out to the ropes? How does the rope hold Undertaker up? He got up on the rope. Old school. And I'm Old like, school. how does that hold? And also the speed in which that these guys bounce off the ropes itself. You're watching a whatever, six foot nine, seven foot man, just running off these ropes and the speed and the power. Uh, you know, I think I'm fast, but when I look at that, I go, that's so fast. It's unbelievable. That cannot, 
feel good or look good coming at you for sure. And yeah, there were so many great moments that I loved. The commentary, like you said, shout out to the camera work. You called it yeah, in the entrances, yeah. but every time there was a big moment, Taker has this face. You know, I brought up JBL last week on his face and like this look. Taker has this, I'm exhausted and I cannot believe this guy is still alive and kicking. And they just stay there. And somehow, you know, I would start making faces. Taker, he holds it. And you sit there for a minute and you feel it as a fan. You go, this is cinema. Yes. <laughs> I like it. One thing I want to point out in the commentary, my favorite line was, JR says, choke slams, last rides, tombstone, and kick out after kick out after kick out. And it just nails the, the point home that Sean wants to win because it's a matter of pride. And one thing I want to point out about this match itself is there's not a true heel or face here. Sure. There's no one wrestling in a dirty way. It's just literally Taker versus Sean, style versus style, as Tim said. And Sean, you would think if you were watching this match that's been done multiple times, a big versus small, that the small guy is going to be fighting from underneath throughout the entire match. But no, the the guile and the veteran presence of Sean to be able to outsmart Taker, that's to me where it starts working the most. And that's what I like the most when it comes to Shawn Michaels. As a Shawn Michaels guy, you know that Sean is going to outsmart you. He's going to be agile. He's going to be the showstopper, the icon when it comes down to the main event, the headliner. And that is when he hits that sweet, that, that sweet chin music, bro. The one that he revved up and he nailed being exhausted was probably the best sale that I've ever seen Taker do because it looked brutal. It looked brutal. And I was sitting there, I was like, Sean, why couldn't you just collapse on Taker like you normally do? That's my favorite sweet chin music. When you hit it, you it would make because the then the kick out wouldn't make sense, I right? Know. It's giving exactly. that second, giving exactly. Undertaker a second to go. And that's what they do and such a great job of, right? That's like, what's so good. The timing between everybody. You mentioned, Mike, the facial impressions, expressions. They, a lot of talent doesn't have that. And a lot of talent lack that as much as Taker and Sean. And that's the journey that they put you on. And, and like you mentioned, the little moments, Greg, build up to the perfect. Like the, the, the like I said, that third act was just perfect all the way through for me. In the live chat right now for our kind of funny members, uh, Brother Still says, the face Undertaker makes when he's lying on Sean's stomach after the kickout was so damn good. And that's another one of my notes, of course, right? Like, Again, having seen this match, I still like, oh, right. He do Sean does the traditional, like, grabs the bottom rope, the pulls cat. himself yeah. back up, gets to him. I'm like, does it end? And then I, the, even for me, the kick out there, you're like, how the fuck is this happening, right? The look on Taker's <laughs> face followed up immediately by JR. I just had an out-of-body experience. The Undertaker's eyes tell a better story than we ever could. Again, the storytelling of these two veterans in the ring and what they're doing in this insanity as they keep going. And to the point of, the athleticism from two old guys pushing it further there, you know, like when, uh, uh, for, well, I mean, when Taker pulls down his straps, Kurt Angle style, right? And then does the throat yeah. sleeve. Oh. Like, fuck, here we go. But HBA, uh, HBK counters the uh, Tombstone Pile Driver into a DDT. Then he gets up, drops his elbow on it, warms up the band, hits Sweet Chin music, covers him for two. JR screams, Good God Almighty, the match continues. J the world is watching a classic. Dude, the Such streak is elbow. alive. Like, oh, come yeah. on, man. The, the one thing I want to say, and I, I mean this uh, only just as more of a compliment than I even thought that it was uh, to everybody involved in the statement, but. For a long time, HBK was our guy. Like HBK was like the legend, and like me and Cool Greg started watching so late that like he had returned at that point, like and was just weekly there. But the way he his presence, you felt like, oh, he's more special than everyone else here. Like sure, there's something about sure. him for just being a dude. He wasn't Undertaker. He wasn't a dude. Whatever. He's just he's just a dude, and it's like you can just feel the legacy, whether it's the song or just his move set, all of that stuff. But he's so special. He is Mr. WrestleMania, not just because he calls himself it, but because. He's just a dude that is larger than life. And for uh, years since um, Seth Rollins, I've always been like, mm. I don't understand Seth Rollins. Like, it just he's not my guy. And it was during the era I wasn't watching. I didn't see the Shield stuff. I didn't see the come up or whatever. Sure. But in recent times, seeing Seth, uh, now that we're so much back into WWE, I'm so impressed with him as a as just a dude. You know, of course. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, he's a workhorse. He's out there. His moveset is just vast and like varied, and he really, really, really tries to put on a show, like uh, do all the things, have the, the songs, have the bits, all of it. 
And for I've been telling my brother this constantly. I've been telling a lot of people. My I I now get it. I think Seth Rollins is like the modern Shawn Michaels. Like I, I put them together. Seeing this match, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Shawn Michaels is Shawn Michaels, and like that's we'll not see 20 years from now, Seth Rollins. And, and <laughs> that's my thing. Is like, yeah, that, I'm I'm not saying this uh, as a dig at Rollins at all. No, no, I, not I still, at all. I do no. think that uh, I stand by what I'm saying. I, I feel like he is the modern uh, Shawn Michaels, but. I just almost feel like I can't even equate the two at all because Shawn Michaels is freaking special, man. Uh, uh, well, j- go, well, sorry. Please, just no, no, no. I, I just got to tell a story. Uh, you said he was bigger than life. I remember going to the Frank Urban Center, the drum in Austin, Texas, and there was a meet and greet, and it was for Shawn Michaels. I was, I forget how old. I was probably in my tw- like 12. It was one Monday Night Raw was on Nintendo 64. <laughs> I go down there with the box cart, uh, the box of Monday Night Raw on Nintendo 64. And has Stone Cold on the cover, right? Yeah. And I, I'm just a kid, and I'm so excited. And there's Shawn Michaels. And I've never, ever, ever been starstruck in my life. I could feel the aura of this man. It is electric, and I'm shaking like a like a deer, man. I'm he's, He walks up, and I'm like, here's my game. And he takes it. He looks at the cover and goes, huh. Flips it over, and on the back of the cover, it's Shawn Michaels getting body slammed by Stone Cold. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, Meh, all right and then he signs it and then he's just he's like chewing gums and he says there you go kid and i just and I, I i remember this experience all my life i don't know where that cover is i gotta look for it now now that i'm back home in austin but tim the the dude is bigger than life and he's he is beyond the guy but he is he is wrestle wrestle mr wrestlemania you know i still remember that moment i never i never will forget it. and i've met famous people i've, I've met famous people but nothing holds a candle to Shawn michaels an amazing story, but I have to tell you, of course, that was WWF Warzone on the N64. Thank you, thank raw. you, thank you. Warzone, <laughs> oh you're God, correct. How embarrassing He's the worst. For this sorry, you know what I mean? sorry. Uh, the one thing I want to say before we move on to finish, it, I think it's telling, is my last bullet point is. Uh, Shawn Michaels always looks like he's in this. He can do this because, like, again, we're talking about this mountain to climb into the you know we all had you watch this you see the matchup he's not gonna end the streak he's not gonna end the streak he's again watching this knowing the streak doesn't end but you're like fuck sean's got that dog in him he could do this he could make it happen easily a five out of five match i yeah. assume for everyone again right sancho yes. okay, oh, oh i was just saying it's five out of five man <laughs> <laughs> but one thing i want to point out is, is, is it's the the finish which we're gonna get to you can start right how- now talk to me about the finish okay the finish is really cool because it, it, if you want to t- compare it to Mike to what's going on now, it's more of like a New Japan finish where you're going to see finisher and finisher encounters a finisher and it's going to be a long, drawn-out ending. My favorite part of the finish is what the WWE did to build to WrestleMania 26 is when they had a rematch between the two is that Shawn Michaels goes, I had him, I was close, but it was just one mistake. And that one mistake haunts me throughout the entire year. His little moonsault into the tombstone counter was by far the, one of the coolest ways to end it. And what I liked about it the most is that Sean sells it like he just literally got he's dead. <laughs> you know, like that, that tombstone knocked him out. And there's a lot of the talent these days in, in other promotions. They don't sell a finish beyond that three count. I always I, I asked Santi this during our podcast. And I asked you gentlemen this. Cause it's a great, it's a five out of five finish anyway. I ask you this, Greg. How long do you think a finisher knocks somebody out? Is it four seconds? Is it five seconds? Like, what's the stun time of a finisher? Because the tombstone from Undertaker, especially like a jumping esque one, yeah, I'm thinking it's a ten to fifteen seconds or down. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you, I mean, you know how it actually is, right? You shouldn't fucking move until the you know the, the winner's out of the ring and or you've yeah. rolled out of the ring to give them their moment or whatever. Right? That's the thing you've lost. It's that one where it's like you know even as like. It can work so well. The ones I hate are the one, two, three. And I there's one notable exception, so don't yell at me yet, everybody. But the one, two, three. And then the person who just lost kicks out at like three and a half. Like Hogan, you mean? <laughs> I'm not naming names. But I will give the pass to Foley at Hell in the Cell. When he just right. moves his leg in the slowest fashion, you're like that's fucking that's awesome. Great. Yeah, it's like character you're work. almost dead and yeah. still in it. But like that's fine. I'm fine with that. But you know what I mean? Like there's that thing about, yeah, I'm with you of how long it should go and what it should be. What I loved about the the finish, right? We rank all these different things is that even watching, it's like, where do you really start the finish? Because it feels like we're, I, this is the most, arguably the most video game ass mm-hmm. IRL match of all time where your friend just keeps countering your special. God damn it. I just, fuck, 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 video fuck. game with cheat codes on. Yeah, exactly. Unlimited right. special. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like, 
I it would just go from him, you know, again, <laughs> Shawn Michaels looks like he can do this. HBK goes for the moonsault, caught into it, fucking done. And then the king, he did it. 17 and 0, says JR. Both men laying there cashed, exhausted, done. And I love what I really love about it is you can hear it in JR King and Cole's voice. They are basking in it. Mm-hmm. They, like King eventually says, this is what WrestleMania is all about. But it's like, even when they're not talking, you know that they're feeling exactly what we're feeling, right? Right before the finish actually started in earnest is when the fans in the second row start doing the worshiping, right? And they, they're they chanting, this is awesome. And the King even calls it out, which is a great show on Peacock. Everybody yes, should watch. You know <laughs> yes, what I mean? Like just fantastic stuff. And then for some reason, we go to a Vander Holyfield. But again, I know. even, even <laughs> the announcers are like we are not going to mention this this is, this doesn't need to be part of the story all right thanks evander you know what i mean it's the worst cut over ever i hated that moment it was perfect it had everything that i wanted i love the kickouts i love the one two ooze i loved i eat that up especially in a match like this where two giants are just exhausted they're they're putting the tank on empty and you can see it they're going back and forth they're hitting all the coolest moves i mean when he countered that last ride or whatever where he picked him up and he kind of sideways yeah it comes out for the pin oh the sideways that was crazy i mean that was some movement that you've never seen before and the last rides the tombstones the sweet chin music undertaker trying to do the big elbow onto the ground yeah stealing sean's move yeah right like it was awesome to have that. And you can feel the energy at home. And I'm sure in the crowd of like, this is picking up to something incredible. And yeah, yeah I, as someone who's never seen this, doesn't know about the streak. I thought this was it. I was fully sold on. He's going to end the streak right here, right now. He's going to get up on top of this turnbuckle. He's going high rent district. He's going to put on a show. And man, I am in awe of Taker's strength. For someone who is that exhausted, you have to think after 30 minutes, to stand there looking half dead and catch a man, grab a hold of him, and do that was awesome. And then you finish with the cool Taker. Eyes roll back to the back of your head. He's got the tongue tongue out. out. Ah, I'm freaking out. (laughs) It's going to haunt my (laughs) dreams forever. (laughs) What more can we say? Like it is, It's a five, but for me, it, it is a five because they left it all on the line, and it was all about the finishers. Two men with so many finishers, and I think the most unique thing about wrestlers at this level is how they can get creative with the reversals, with using each other's finishers, with every combination of that. And when you get two guys that have sweet chin music and the cross face and the elbow off the top rope and the moonsault and the last ride and the um, old school like and Hell's Gate submission, like all of these things just result in something so special that when it ends with the the boot salt into the tombstone like it was a perfect end like it felt so good at any moment for the last five minutes it could have went either way and when it ends you're like it had to go this way and this was this was it this was the three count and it made sense 100 percent. yeah what a match what a moment 17 and oh by the way yeah the wall up there when 17 and oh on the giant wall behind it was like yeah, that, that's how you end this. I, so someone in the graphics package had to know the result. And I don't know. They had to. They had the 16 and 1 and said, who knows? Well, one thing I want to point out, gentlemen, is this is a interesting thing. I personally think, Mike, if you want, you could cover your ears if you want, if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say, because it's a spoiler if you want to dr- go down this journey. When the Undertaker streak ends against Brock Lesnar, I looking now watching this match, I feel like that was probably the worst mistake because there's something special about the streak. It is a must-watch WrestleMania. Sometimes you would buy a WrestleMania to see Taker fight somebody. Yeah. And when that aura is lost, I feel like you're. this is why you're missing out. There, there's like a linchpin of mania is gone because of that. And one of the things I want to point out, to bring this to modern day, is the bloodline. All right? Everyone's talking that they want Cody Rhodes to finish the story. I get it. But what you going to do when the bloodline storyline is over? The bloodline is the reason why there's so many people at a feverish pace that WWE is outperforming its most it's ever done since the attitude, almost the attitude era. And I'm just saying the Roman streak, when that day is over, when Roman loses the title, it's going to be extremely difficult for the WWE to land the plane, as we like to say, and kind of funny, land the plane because it's just impossible to be, get it right. Because considering that even the taker, when that ended, you were like, 
why <laughs> you know it didn't hit and you thought it would and now you're trying to get me to go and now you're trying to get me riled up for a different podcast with <laughs> podcast. Just say it, right? Like, just say it. i'm just saying it, i mean you, you, I, the problem you're talking about landing the plane the plane never lands in wwe it's always yeah. moving right so it's hey, like what'll happen what has to now. happen is that you know a heel will have to rise to fight cody rhodes you know as champion and do that uh and it's like you'll still have roman in the bloodline falling apart tearing themselves apart doing all these different things but is it shinsuke is it going to be rollins is it uh, you know where the fuck's punk gonna be and when does he come back? Like, there's a million pieces to it, but it's going to be Lex Luger victory parade for a while, I think, <laughs> when he finally does it. But yes, there will be a depression of like, okay, cool. The hierarchy of the WWE universe has changed. Now what happens? Oh, no. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready. <laughs> I digress. I think we all agree overall this match is a five out of five. Yes. Five out of five. Yeah. Just a great pick, Fuego Del Sol. Great one. Thanks for getting that in there. I'm just surprised he didn't pick the WrestleMania 26. Well, right. you can take it up with him, all right? He, he's, oh, I know he's going to fold me in half. He's going to me to death. <laughs> Shoot and start but, press into your living room. Yeah, something. But it, it's one of those matches that I think the reason why I like that one a little bit more, if it only gets a 5.5, is because there's more stakes to it. Now we're talking about greater stakes, Mike. This is where if Sean loses, he has to retire. Oh, oh no. See? See? And you get, like, there's a moment at the end of that, Mike. You're just like, hell yeah, dude. Sean's awesome. Okay. Got to watch it, Mike. Okay, we'll put it on the list. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is called WrestleMania Ranked. That means we review each and every WrestleMania in the categories we already have and then rank them against each other, these matches, but not before we have a special segment we call One Man Gang Gang. Of course, this is where WWE Superfan and kind of funny G. Cool Greg comes out and tells us his thoughts on the match. Cool Greg, what did you think of Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels? What's up, everybody? Uh, Sancho, how are you? What's going on? You're awesome, cool, Greg. You're the man, dude. <laughs> Appreciate you. Um, this is one of the weird ones where I've seen this match a bunch of times, so I knew it was going to be a 5 out of 5. It's definitely a 5 out of 5, but it's weird watching it alone. I, the All-Star game was on when Tim decided to watch it and throw it on with Gia, so I, I ended up not watching this match with him. It's the first time I've seen this match alone, and damn, it did. It took it out of me a little bit. It wasn't nearly as exciting just wow. because I didn't see the same things, the things that normally Tim gets excited about or James would get excited about that I don't care about. And I was like, oh, yeah, people care about that. So, uh, but, but one other thing I wanted to add was he was saying shout out to the ropes for when Undertaker does old school. Yeah. I tried to Google it and find it. I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure Taker's hit old school during the Royal Rumble. So, like, when he's in the Rumble match, he, he's hit that before, walked down, and it's like, oh, is he going to throw him over? Just push him off. <laughs> I'm pretty positive he's done that. I Breaking couldn't find it because they're just too, both Royal Rumble and in Undertaker are too infamous. But, yeah, five out of five, easy. Love you guys. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Cool Greg, as always. All right, it's cool time Greg's to rank home. the Mania matches oh, so far. We have to. The list looks like this. Number one, Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania X8. Uh, number two, Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35. Number three, Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha versus Nia at WrestleMania 33. And number four, JBL versus Finley at WrestleMania 24. <laughs> Who put that match on the card? Was it JB JBL? JBL fucking L did. JBL picked that God. and made us watch that. You know what I mean? Hey, the, he's remember, like the hey, perfect boom, boom. heel of like, hey, watch a bad match of mine rather than any of my good matches. I digress. Hey, reminder, you, the match before this one was Ray versus JBL. And, yeah. You know, thank yeah. you, Ray. A great, you know, <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, Sancho, where would you rank this on the list? Man, I sure do love Hogan Rock. It's probably my favorite one of all time. Yeah. And I'm going to have to keep it at, up there. I love Kofi Mania. Kofi Mania was, of was course, awesome. The only tarnished thing about Kofi Mania was what happened in the Monday night after it was just Ugh. awful. I would have to put this at two. I like Taker and Sean. They're awesome. But there's something special about Icon versus Icon. And the crowd of Tor uh, was Toronto. Yeah, Toronto yeah. just took that match to a whole other level. And at the same time, that one wasn't for belts, as Tim liked to point out. But... I I cannot let go of streak versus the, the career and the, the final moments of that match is a stronger memory for me than that one. And then tw this one, then 25. And I could honestly remember this one as Taker almost just like ruined his life with that. Jesus with Christ. That. Yeah, we were inches away from centimeters, <laughs> probably from a much different ending. Than that one. Thank yeah, God. That much different ending. So yeah. that's the only thing I, I could walk away from this one. But it's still a stellar match. And 
Um, yeah, it's number two for me on the list. You're talking about two matches that are clearly five out of five amazing things. Like yes. really are like, this is what WrestleMania is all about. And I love this match. I think hands down the match itself is better than rock Hogan. Like that doesn't surprise yeah. anybody, but I'm with Sancho of like, there's something about rock Hogan from stem to stern that made it so special that it's still the match. I would show anybody of like, this is professional wrestling. This is what it is. Again, this is a much better wrestling match. This is a much more exciting, you know, longer bout of people going at it, leaving it all out there. But it's like, I would put this as number two as well. And that breaks my heart. Cause again, I don't want to act like I'm shit talking an amazing match. Timothy, I see you thinking. It, I mean, it, it, there's no thought. This this is number two. Uh, Hulk, Ro, Ro, Hulk Rogan, uh, <laughs> Hogan Rock. It, there's there it, that is the lightning in the bottle, and you can't create that. And like, there's something about that that it, you just can't account for. Like, I feel like this is a better match. I think this is better, pretty much in every way overall. Like, this is better, but sometimes better isn't actually the thing that like puts it over the top. Like. Uh, the, the other one is just so special that, yeah, it's, it's number one. I feel like we've said this many times. Wrestling can be so many things. Wrestling is many things. This is a perfect example of what this type of wrestling is. That's a perfect example of what that type of wrestling is. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I gotta give it to, to rock Hogan because I, I just don't ever think that something like that can happen again. I do think something like this can happen again, man. You guys said some really great things about that one. It was fun to watch the passing of the torch. Toronto absolutely brought it. There was some special moments there, but this is number one. This is the absolute peak of wrestling. The storyline of 16 and 0 versus Mr. WrestleMania 16 years. You have a 30 minute, just all out brawl, leaving it on the table. The moves there were stunning and incredible. The crowd got up when they needed to get up and the finale of it all, I mean, that is unmatched. Yes, we saw passing on the torch. It was beautiful. It was a special moment. But that finale in the ring and the actual moves, I don't know if you can top that from what we saw from those two. And, yeah, if we went hype package for hype package, all blah, 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 I still go with this one. So this is my number one. This is unreal. Well, by a vote of one to three, you lose. Yes. Yes. Too bad. <laughs> uh, people in the chat were very angry. Yes. They're with me. They yeah. know. Toby Blue, this is number one easy. I'll be shocked if it gets topped, he said, right before we started voting. But just like with wrestling, winning doesn't mean everything. Exactly, Sometimes exactly. losing feels good, too. Um, the best line, he beat Andre with that move. Yeah, like, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. That really solidified it. And, oh, dude. And so Rock V. Hogan, so good. WrestleMania X8 continues to be number one, but number two, Taker versus HBK at WrestleMania 25 enters And what's last again? Fray. Huh? What's last again? Last is JBL Finley from Can WrestleMania 24. All, the all you want me to put that at 10 now and see if anything <laughs> yeah. fills in before WrestleMania in Philadelphia? We'll find the out, ladies Thor and gentlemen. Too. <laughs> but to exactly. see what we are watching for next week, we asked the man, Becky Lynch. Hello, it is the man, Becky Lynch, and my WrestleMania match pick for you to watch is the man, big time, Becky Lynch versus the EST Bianca Belair at WrestleMania 38. One of my favorites. Let's go watch it. Go now. Go on. Hello. I love it. There you go. Thank you, and Becky. That's so That's cool. One. Your homework for next week, everybody, is to watch uh, Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 38. Then come back here to have us review and rank it and shove it into the rankings and see where it all ends up. Sancho, before we let you go, where can people keep up with you? You can keep up with me on Mondays and Fridays. We're doing watch parties for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And the PLE for the Elimination Chamber. I will be up at 4 in the morning. Whoa. Uh, towards the yeah, hey, hey. hey. I used to be up for Fortnite updates. I could do this. Dedication. Uh, the dedication to the craft. Uh, you can find me on twist.tv slash Sancho West for those. If you can't watch live, you need a, a refresher, you need a wrap up, go to Sancho West Wrestling on TikTok again. It's the only place where I could put the content without anyone breathing down my neck from the Fed. So go ahead and watch it. And I post, I post wrap ups either the night of or the night after Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And there's like a three to five minute little clip you get to know everything that happened and what went down for that uh, show. And that way you get to keep up with wrestling for a major PLE. Sounds great. Sancho, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure. 
Remember, everybody, that's another episode of the Kind of Funny Screencast special, WWE WrestleMania Ranked. Each and every week leading up to WrestleMania 40, we're reviewing and ranking a match handpicked by our wrestling friends. If you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get each and every episode ad-free, to watch us record the other podcast live as we record them, including this one, I guess, technically, and, of course, your exclusive show, Greg Way, each and every day. You can get the Kind of Funny Screencast for free with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Until next time, it's clobbering time.